So traumatic changes to the peripheral vestibular system, relatively uncommon, but we can sometimes see it either with things happening surgically or if they're getting more aggressive ear flushing, especially if they already have a ruptured tympanum. So just being very careful that you do a really good otoscopic exam before you're putting anything inside the ear. Sometimes this will happen in animals that are under anesthesia for other procedures. They might be getting a dental or something. And then just as a courtesy, we're cleaning ears out without realizing that they have a ruptured tympanum. And then they wake up from that anesthesia very, very vestibular because of that traumatic flushing to the inner ear. So you figure if you have a, a ruptured tympanum and it, it doesn't, it doesn't take much to do that. So in a lot of dogs and cats that have chronic otitis media, they're going to have such severe pressure on the tympanum and just chronic inflammation that will affect the tympanum that it will rupture naturally on its own. And again, for a lot of these animals, because they won't necessarily have any signs of external disease, you're not really clued into the fact that they might have a ruptured tympanum. And so if you have a ruptured tympanum, oftentimes trying to kind of treat the underlying disease, or let's just say it's, you know, ruptured incidentally, I usually figure it's going to take probably two to four weeks for that tympanum to seal over. And so if we have any animal, let's say that we've done a myringotomy, or we know they have a ruptured tympanum, we have a hard no on putting anything down the ear, I'd say for a minimum of four weeks. So but I think it's important, especially in cats to just always look down and make sure that their tympanum is intact. Lots of times with dogs are more likely to have chronic external ear disease in addition to having middle and internal ear disease. And so usually kind of some indication, whereas cats, very, very commonly, they're allergic. And so you might not see anything externally and they're sitting there with a, with a ruptured eardrum. So yeah, and then as far as resolution of, of clinical signs, it really is very variable. A lot of it depends on what happens. Like if it was just flushing with a saline, I've seen animals be very, very vestibular immediately afterwards. But because it was just saline, which is relatively benign, they'll gradually improve usually over the course of a week or two. Versus if you're flushing with any of those things, it could be more toxic to the inner ear, you could have permanent, you know, damage. So just being really careful what you put in there. Oftentimes need to have an anti-inflammatory steroid to kind of help reduce that inner ear inflammation. So usually what I'll do is I'll do an injectable dose to kind of get started and then do oral versus putting anything inside the ear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, usually I'll have people not put anything inside the ear, like I said, for a minimum of four weeks.